Well, hello everybody and welcome to Mount and Blade Warband with the Diplomacy mod. I said in the channel update I was going to do it and here it is, a little bit late. Um, I fell ill, sadly. Uh, you can probably still hear I'm a little bit croaky. But I fell ill almost immediately after I made that channel update saying I was going to have more time to make videos and there'll be lots more videos coming out and then... I wake up the next day and I can't speak. In fact, I, I made a little thing on Twitter about uh, how much I couldn't speak. This is what I sounded like. Yeah, bloody typical that, isn't it? Typical. Typical. The first week I have to make lots of videos and I sound like that. Anyway, Mountain Blade Warband with the Diplomacy mod. The Diplomacy mod makes it a hell of a lot better. It doesn't change very much early game, but it changes a lot more late games. There's a lot more we can do. But you'll probably see how that goes. Let's start a new game. So, of course, first thing we have to do is choose our character. Now, we can choose um, whatever the hells we can make our guy how we want. But I've got this. Hopefully you heard that. Now, that is your standard Games Workshop D6. I'm going to be rolling that for all our stats. We're going to be random here because I don't want to pick... A specifically strong character or whatever. I want to have quite a random early game. Because I think in RPGs, having random stats makes it fun. You know, D&D, I like when... Well, I don't know. I haven't played D&D for a long time. But back in the olden days when I did it, it was fun when you had to roll your stats and stuff. So anyway, welcome adventurer to the Blairbizzy Mob Mountain Blade Warband. Before beginning the game, you must create your character. Yes, indeed. Well, there's not much to select here. I'm, I'm going to go male because I am one of those in real life, despite what you may hear in my voice. Some people say I sound like a girl or a 12-year-old boy. I don't know where they get that impression. Anyway, you were born years ago in a land far away. Your father was a... It's a two. Our father was a travelling merchant. You were born the son of a travelling merchant. Or the son of travelling merchants. Apparently we were kind of just adopted by the clique or something. And his mother was a travelling merchant as well. That's probably how they met, you know? Always moving from place to place in search of profit. Although your parents were wealthier than most and educated you as well as they could, you found little opportunity to make friends on the road, living mostly for the moments when you could sell something to somebody. You, le you started to learn about the world almost as soon as you could walk and talk. You spent your early life as a... It's a five, one, two, three, four, five, a stepchild. As a boy growing out of childhood, you rode the great steps on a horse of your own, learning the ways of the grass and the desert. Although you sometimes went hungry, you became a skillful hunter and pathfinder in this tactless country. Your body too started to harden with muscle as you grew into the life of a nomad man. Then, so wait, did our travelling merchants, were we part of a deal or something? Did we just get left behind? Did the car did we just wake up one day and the caravan was gone? Gee, thanks mum and dad. Yeah, appreciate that. Anyway, as a young adult, we became a four, a goods peddler. Though the distinction felt sudden to you, somewhere along the way you became a man. Or you had become a man, as it's worded in that piece of text. And the whole world seems to change around you. Heeding the call of the open road, you travelled from village to village, buying and selling what you could. There we go. So we did learn. We did learn stuff. It was not a rich existence, but you became a master at haggling. Even the most miserly elders into giving you a good price. Soon you knew you would be well placed to start your own trading empire. But soon everything changed and you decided to strike out on your own as an adventurer. What made you take this decision was it's for being forced out of your home. Well, we technically didn't have a home, so I'm going to re-roll that. It's a six. Okay, let's go back. Okay, okay, okay. We'll get there. That's a five. Now the lust for money and power. Only you knew exactly what had caused you to give up your old life and become an adventurer. To everyone else, it is clear that you are now motivated solely by personal gain. You want to be rich, powerful, respected, feared. You want to be the one whom others hurry to obey. You want people to know your name and tremble whenever it is spoken. You want everything and you won't let anyone stop you from having it. Right, so, you know, growing up as a little lad following mum and dad round on the uh, trading caravans and one day we got left just abandoned or maybe sold as part of a deal gee thanks uh, struck out on our own on the steps learned to ride a horse learned to go to different cities and began our own trading empire screw you mum and dad i'm gonna put you out of business for selling me right okay well uh because because games crash because games do that i'm going to allow myself to say without quitting and we'll, we'll 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 do some of this so we we seem to be pretty well balanced so far in terms of attributes we'll just um 
We'll take a little bit and maybe set ourselves up like that. Okay, so we're good at trade. Um, leadership's a good skill to have. Prisoner management is a good skill to have. Iron flesh is good. What else have we got? Inventory management. That could be very useful. Pathfinding. Nice. Uh, riding three to be expected. Bit of horse archery. Bit of looting. Not, not, not at all terrible. We'll take some power strike as well though. And in terms of our proficiencies, we really ain't all that good. Not knowing where we're going to go with our character yet in terms of what we're going to do. I'm just going to assign them relatively well across the board and we will enter our name well our well we, we we did everything completely random so randomus randomus the stepchild that was abandoned by his parents and forged his own empire a real underdog story we're basically that guy from slumdog millionaire not having seen the film but i i think it's some kind of poor abandoned kid that becomes a big I, I don't know, I haven't seen Slumdog Millionaire, but we are, we're the true Slumdog right now. And we're going to be the millionaire, right? Randomus, let's see what you look like, son. Shall we, uh, shall we roll for all of these? It's a lot of rolling, isn't it? You know what? Oh, man, we've got a nice jacket. Hey, check us out. Okay. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's roll for all of these. I'll probably cut this out because it will take a long time. But let's go. Okay, that's a five. It'll be about there, won't it? Well, there he is, my friends. Randomus, the abandoned. Randomus, the slumdog. Randomus, the the whatever the hell. He's had a hard upbringing, but throughout it all, he has maintained a very dapper look and a moustache and everything, so I think he's done pretty well there. Also, check my rolling. Had a couple of good rolls there. This isn't completely indicative of what I rolled because uh, sometimes when you move one slider it moves others but uh, I was rolling pretty well it doesn't really show it up there but I had a lot of fives and sixes so uh yeah suck it um RNG people but uh, suck it uh, I don't know who I'm saying suck it to really but when I roll good dice I want to say suck it to someone okay I want to go play Warhammer right now if I'm gonna be rolling like that man I'm gonna be making some kills with archers let's go okay randomness Oh, I've threw my dice away. We've got one more roll to do, haven't we? You hear about Karadia? A land torn between rival kingdoms, battling each other through supremacy. A haven for knights and their mercenaries, cutthroats and adventurers. All willing to risk their lives in pursuit of fortune, power or glory. In this land which holds great dangers and even greater opportunities, you believe you are past behind. I believe I missed out a word there. You believe you may leave your past behind and start a new life. You feel that finally you hold the key of your destiny in your hands, free to choose as you will. And whatever course you take, great adventures will await you. Drawn by the stories you hear about Karadia and its kingdoms, you travel to, so we've got five to choose from. We'll obviously re-roll sixes in that case. That's an artillery dice. Okay, we don't want that one. Um, uh, this is the dice that we want. And it's a four, so we have travelled to Sargoth. In the kingdom of the Nords, you took passage with a trading longship carrying Rifalcons from the furthest reaches of the North to be bartered for linen and wool. It sailed early in the season, but the master reckoned that the risks of drifting ice and later winter storms could be justified by arriving ahead of the Sea Raiders, who by April would be sailing forth from their lands, from their island lairs to ravage Kauradia's coasts. It was some relief when your ship came in sight of the delta of the Vil and Boluk rivers and a short while later rode past tidal flats and the coastal marches to the city of Sargath, home to the Sea Raiders' distant kingsmen, the Nordic Lords, who a few generations ago had carved themselves a kingdom in this rich and troubled land. You're exhausted by the time you find the inn in Sargoth and fall asleep quickly. However, you awake before dawn and are eager to explore your surroundings. You venture out onto the streets which is still deserted, all of a sudden you hear a sound that stands the hairs on your neck on end, the rasp of a blade sliding through its scabbard. Well, we got ourselves a crossbow and a, and a big long stick. Is that is that the miscreant over there? Okay, apparently it is. Okay, well, let's, let's be having him then. That, that was a miss right there. Okay, okay, right. Let's, ta let's take things to the stick then, if he's going to be like that. Oh, Christ. Okay, yeah. Blimey! Blimey! Okay, that's a... A bit of a... I mean, it's early in the day, but holy, holy heck. Man, what the hell? I didn't even get my stick out. We're struck down. However, before we lose consciousness, we hear shouts of rushing footfalls. 
You wait to find yourself indoors, weak but alive. That's bloody rude of that guy, isn't it? Didn't even, didn't even get the stick ready. Unbelievable. Well, I was going to start talking, friends, about how amazing Mountain Blade Bannerlords looks. I've been watching some uh, gameplay footage on YouTube. If you haven't, you definitely should if you're interested in this kind of game. It looks amazing! But hey, man, let's go and take revenge on that absolute bastard. March into Saga. Sorry for kicking you, mate. I've been playing too much Skyrim. He's the talk button on Skyrim. Ah, you're awake. Well, it's good to see that you can still walk. You're lucky that we came along. I had been speaking with the watch when we heard the sounds of a fight and ran to see what was happening. It wasn't much of a fight, it was a damn mugging, I say! We didn't arrive in time to prevent you getting knocked down, but we may have saved you from getting your throat cut. Now, maybe you can help me. We've always had brigands in the hills, driven to banditry by war, debt, or love of violence. Recently, however, they've been getting bolder, leaving their camps in the wild and venturing into town, looking for unwary prey. The watch commander tells us it's because of all the fighting on the frontiers. Fewer men to keep an eye on the streets. But I'm not sure what to make of all that. It seems to me that the most logical explanation is that these bandits have an ally inside the walls who helps them enter unnoticed and helps them identify particularly tempting targets. Last week they took my brother! I don't know what my brother was thinking, a lad from this prominent house, out alone after dark in times like these. Well... I suppose you were too, but you're a stranger here and didn't know how bad things had become. He had no such excuse, but he's family. So what can you do? If you don't protect your kin, then people will start thinking that you can't protect your investments either. And I can't have that. No doubt the gang will soon send word about a ransom, but I don't care to pay it. So here's my proposition. You look like you've had a bit of experience with a blade. Well, evidently not on this morning's suggestions, Mr. Merchant. And more importantly, you must have a bit of fire in your belly or you wouldn't be coming to Karadia to seek your fortune. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Gather a small party, track down these bandits to their lair and teach them a lesson they won't forget. Get my brother back safe. In return, you'll earn my lasting gratitude and a bit of silver. What do you say? I am damn interested in that proposition. You won't be able to do this by yourself, though. If you try and take on a whole gang single-handedly, the hunter will become the hunted. I'll warrant. You'll first want to round up a group of volunteers. There's always a few lads in the villages around here looking for a bit of work that's more interesting than tilling the soil or hauling water. They'll follow you if you pay. So here, take this purse of 100 dinars. Consider it an advance on your reward. Go to the villages and use the money to hire some help. I reckon you'll need at least five men to take on these bandits. Very good, sir! I shall go collect men from the villages! Good, you can find me again in the tavern. Lovely! Okay! Well, see you soon, bub. Sorry about getting knocked out and probably bleeding up your nice rug and things. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to sort out how good I am at this whole fighting malarkey, aren't I? All right, let's go to Quinn first. And um, yes, yes, we know how the game works. Thank you, Mr. Tutorial Person. And let's hire us some kids. We can afford with 100 to hire a lot more than five. As you can see, four, oh, okay, maybe not. Uh, it's 10 apiece, isn't it? Well, we got four. There's five looters there. Do we, do we think we can take them? I think we can take them. It's going to be five on five. But, you know, we we got to avenge our... we we got to regain our honour. We got pride to regain right now after getting knocked out in the streets. Maybe this guy knows that guy. I don't know. They're all, they're all the same, aren't they? Let's have a look at our inventory first. Apparently, we've got quite a lot. We've got Sumter Horse that win. Oh, man, we got two horses. That's a really good thing to start with. We've had quite a good little start here. We've got wool, fish, linen, pottery. We've got ourselves a saddle horse. We can do with a better weapon. That'll be the first thing. And, and better armor and all, all of those things. But for now, I think we can deal with some looters. Come here, you lot. What do you want? I want to know who the damn hell knocked me out in the early hours in Sargoth right now. Is it you? Surrender or die as you wish. Prepare to die. Right, 5v5. Let's just get charging. Um, Yes, we, we've got big axes with our chaps. I don't think that... And they're not even wearing clothes, man. They're not even wearing clothes. How do they expect to withstand big axes if they're not even wearing clothes? And I would say crossbow bolts, but... None of them appear to be hitting them. Oh, there we go! There's a bit of crossbow in right there. Okay, that was that was that was somewhat poor crossbowing, but we're we're getting there. Well done, these Nords. Yeah! Yeah! That's what I thought! Taste my stick, foul gluter! Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, well, I would say pride restored right there. Cracking job there, lads. Oh no, I just spilt my drink. Cracking job there, lads. It went into my lap. 
but it's okay, it was only water. Not that that's good, but it was water. Right, so we captured some enemies. It's really good if you're wondering how to get early money in this game. Get prisoner management as one of your starting skills, because although loot is not going to be worth a lot, it will be worth a lot for this time of the game, if that makes sense. So, right, um... I believe the Nords turn into the Huskarls, which are the strongest um, melee unit on the game. So let's turn them all into footmen and have them going down that route. And let's grab ourselves a Falcon. And that is actually, yeah, a little bit better. We'll take some Nomad armor. Our leather jacket is nice and all, but um, we've, got, we've got to use what, what's best, right? Anyway, so that was a successful start, right? Let's head over to... Well, Hain and then Jelbegi and then back to Sargoth. That seems like a nice little triangle. Maybe maybe hit up some action in Tyr as well. Nord Huntsman. We are free brothers. We will fight only for ourselves from now on. Now give us gold or taste our steel. Oh, what the... Whoa, 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 whoa. I ain't up for this. Where do you guys come from? No need to fight. I'm ready to pay. I mean, I would pay for free passage. We're, we're pretty flush with cash right now. I don't want to die or anything. Um, I don't know how many of them there are. I'm going to assume more than us. We made light work of those looters, but I'm going to do the very sensible thing now. 111 dinars. Good, you are clever. Now, having a look at your baggage, I reckon a fellow like you could pretty easily afford 111. To be fair, that's, that's not a lot of money for us. But where the hell did they come from and how many of them were there? I need, I need, I need information now. Did I was, I was I correct? There was 10 of them. Yeah, I think I made the correct decision. Not necessarily a, a, a brave decision, but the right decision, you know. Anyway... What I'd really love is to be as fast across the map as I can be. Now, it's not going to be that. Let's avoid this chap, right? I'm not going to pay more passage. I've paid my passage once. I'm not paying it again. But equally, I don't want to get caught in a fight with 11 trained footmen when there's only the five of us and a couple of us are injured right now. Ah, that, that, I was clicking on the thing, for God's sake. Now I'm going to have to pay more money, otherwise I'll die. Oh, screw everything right now. There's 12 of them. I was clicking on the C. Apparently that doesn't um, count there. Right, but well, we have some goods that we can just get rid of. But my God, that's annoying, isn't it? I believe pottery. We'll just sell it. We'll just sell it. I am. I am. I'm, I'm a bit fuming right now, but I think, I think we've definitely made the correct choice with what we've done here. Is there any good weapons we can buy for a decent price? We can get a Bardish, which is... Damn, looks pretty good. Swing of 48. That damn well beats 18, doesn't it? One-handed battle axe is not really what we're looking for right now. I'd say two-handed is more up our street. Although it doesn't really matter from this instant. I would like a bow and arrow as opposed to a crossbow and arrow. Just because it's quicker. A heavy two-handed mace. Oh, that looks jolly nice, doesn't it? But we can't... Basically, we can't really afford anything. Okay, so we have decent money. Although it is damn annoying what has happened there. This land is is riddled sadly and we're gonna to have to be damn clever to sneak around it you know okay we'll recruit some more volunteers another four that's pretty good that gives us seven in total is that right eight eight and they're all fit okay well let's go to gel beggy we've got the money to get a few more so we might as well i'd say and that way at least we're gonna be a match for you know train swords oh, for flipping else sake nord footman okay i don't think we can uh I don't think we can pay for free passage again. Nine against 12. Okay. Um, lads. 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 Let's hold this position, right? Hold this position, guys. We'll, we'll shoot them as they come over the hill, okay? I'm not paying for free passage anymore. We've done it enough. I've just got to be a little smarter on the map, I think. Um, hopefully, I can pick a couple of them off before they come. We're going to have to be a bit smart here. They're trained footmen, which means none of them are going to have um, ranged weapons, I should hope. So if we can just pick a couple off here and then fight in the line, you never know. I thought I saw them over there. I did see them over there, okay? I think I'm firing a hell of a lot too low right now. But we've got a lot of action here with our crossbow before they get within distance. It's just saying we're damn rubbish with the crossbow, right? Come on now, let's get one hit at least. Oh, one of our guys has uh, ranged stuff as well. There's something good. 
That's what I'm talking about right there. That's somewhat... That, that was actually a miss, wasn't it? Okay, so... Uh, so it turns out that they actually do have ranged stuff, so I'm incorrect on that assumption. Ow! Hold the line, my lads! Hold the line, my lads! Okay, that's one down. That's good. Ow! Ow! I was not expecting a great result from this, but I just... This has been bad. We should have paid for passage again, but I was getting so damn frustrated. Can we retreat? No, we can't. Why is there so many deserters in this land anyway, right? <laughs> I'm going to run out of map soon. Are all our guys down? Oh, that's blooming awful, isn't it? And we, we've got a big stick sticking out of our arm here. <laughs> this is bad. We've not had a good start here, have we, Randomus? Oh, damn it, he got us. There was not a lot we could do there, I think, but we couldn't pay for more passage. We need to have a talk with whoever's bloody the marshal of this land. Because now we're prisoner. We need to have a word with whoever the bloody marshal is here, right? <laughs>